Frogs. Frogs. Oh, frogs. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> frogs. Okay, we are set to go. I'm still opening my. It's almost springtime. Mm -hmm. Daylight. So we're live. Mm -hmm. It all seems to work better in bigger rooms, though. I've noticed it does. In a, in a small, small conference room, room it doesn't yeah. work very well. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's four of you here, so that constitutes a new one. It's a couple minutes. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Secretary, you have. Uh, Got a handle on who's here, who's not here? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So in that case, uh, I think our first order of business is approval of the minutes of February 8th. A chance to review them. Okay. I want to read my minutes. Corrections or anything. We don't get it. So we can have a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All second. Right along. Jump right into old business. Pure maintenance. Yeah. Our favorite topic. I guess parking is our favorite topic. So pure, mm -hmm. pure maintenance is second. We are in the process of choosing a structural engineer to examine the two piers. Okay. And make sure we have funding for that. So assuming this will probably happen relatively soon, but yes. Which is what happened nine months ago. Yeah. Before spring time. Yeah. Good. Okay. That just comes out of town funds. That doesn't. Yeah, uh, I have some funding in my budget in the town. I have some funding I'm holding. Also, with uh, we're working at a grant for several items down at the. Uh, Was that the grant package the that came through, through the? Yeah. yeah. I think Vinny sent it on to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. So we don't need to do anything at this point then, which we're good at doing that. So that's good. So that's that, and the purpose will be the structural engineer will give us a floor on what's required. Yes. Yeah, what I want them to do is, is if we haven't really done anything to the piers you know, uh, since we were built, and I, will, I want to have an exam and see what we need to do with what is the maintenance to keep people at 100%. Was that so before I'd rather spend some money now than one more money? Walkway is bad disrepair. Walkway makes it really nice. All right. Uh, our other old business is getting back into the uh, the ordinance. I want to make sure we have to make a foot or not, but uh, make sure we leave enough time for new business. We have a couple of things to talk about. So, I think we're picking this up in. Went down pick up here, but I wrote that after the first meeting too, so I'm not sure if I'm actually going to go. We in Article 5, Section 4. Is that where we ended up? That's over there. While we're on this topic, I saw your boring guide. You sent out. Oh, yeah. And I guess the question is is there anything in that that you think we need to add to ours? I think we have kind of a small version of that in here. Yeah, I, we're going to have to, I have to look through it. I haven't had a chance to look through it. Okay. 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 Where are we at? Now? See, I thought we were uh, page nine. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. I wrote it down in the. In the Yes, doc two eight twenty two. Yeah, we one C with the creation of maintenance and warning list. That's what we stopped. Okay. Yeah, we got two abandoned vessels, and that was the state definition. 
and then yeah, three, yeah, three, yeah. four, right? So yeah, we, we finished page nine. I think we're on page ten. So we're on page ten, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody any changes in here? It seems like pretty uh, basic stuff. The Where's the morning renewal? Morning renewal section. Let's find that first. Renewal's always going to January. Morning. I'm sorry. The new mornings is always going to January. They go from. Um, just looked it up. Let's see. Talks about windows. That's the best time they've always had to go because it seems like actually we just sent them out right we're trying to yeah. the reason i ask is because last week at the annual harbor masters conference for the entire state i put a questionnaire out to every single uh, harbor in the state and i had 92 responses Ooh. but those are those were in a paper format and I didn't have a chance because we're so busy running the conference that um I have one of my guys on the board of directors putting them into a spreadsheet sure. now based on town mm -hmm. fee uh how many days a month it has to sit on the boring what it has to do the requirements so I, I probably won't have that until April. Okay. So you but think I, that might have impact on when we talk about fees then? I think it's gonna have impact on what is required to renew your board. Okay. And I think personally that we're going to have to look at the commercial guys. The commercial guys, I don't need to worry about because they'll meet the 30 day criteria or whatever we put in there. Mm -hmm. but I know there was a discussion because I had it written on page nine, I had it written mooring requirement parameters. And I was trying to figure out where it was in there. It says, so we can make a notation that we have to go back. Section three. What was it, Tony? Section permit suspension and revocation. It's under. On page five. On page page five. five. It doesn't say. It just says permit suspensions and. The so Heartmaster finds that the mooring has not been used for at least 30 days between April, April 1st, October of the year. And let's find that the uh, Okay, so it's in here. Yeah, it's okay. So, so we we have, we'll sit on this. We're okay, gonna sit so on we this. Revisit this. We have to re we'll have to revisit it once we have okay. to. So we got that. So that's Article Four, Section Three. We're going to need to revisit. Once I have the spreadsheet done. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess now we're on page ten, right? Correct. Section five. Okay. In uh, in section six, we should put a sentence in there. It says a person shall not moor or permit to be moored in any harbor a vessel of any kind whatsoever which is unseaworthy or in a badly deteriorated condition or which is likely to sink or damage docks wards floats or other vessels at which they become a menace to navigation except in cases of emergency we should put a sentence in there that um 
we need to give Gene the ability that if someone walks to the harbor and ties a boat to the dock and leaves it for six months and the thing floods out, that he has the ability to remove it. And when I say move it, mm -hmm. I don't mean like move it nice. I mean like move it to the dock and <laughs> hook a truck onto it and drag it up the parking lot. Because if it's if it's a if it's if it's a derelict vessel, mm -hmm. doesn't it, section eight would that fall under section eight? Or section three abandoned vessels. Is it one of those? Well, it, it 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 would come under section section three. Let's see. Oh, the previous page. Yeah. We were going to use the state's definition on that. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, because if we don't, if we declare declare a vessel abandoned, we have it has to be declared by the town abandoned before submerged lands will come in to fund the removal of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want to make sure the state we have that. Yeah. Um, So I was just going to say, Mervyn Gates has sent a text. He's uh, logged into the meeting. At, at so C. sorry. Yes. I, I, Do you want to add that? Sorry. sorry. The, there's a difference, though, between unseaworthy, uh, unseaworthiness uh -huh. and, and abandonment. Abandon. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that we cover the angle so that we have the ability. Um, <clears throat> yep. Gene has the ability to. To do, mm -hmm. do something with something because else. the one could be somebody could have under the state statute of being the vessel that has to sit for 30 days and once yeah. it lands on property then we have to deal with the property <coughs> of the town. if it's unseaworthy we can deem it unseaworthy um it's somebody somebody's we deem it unseaworthy and i.e not abandoned but let's say the owner joe q fisherman pulls the boat up ties up the dock Mm -hmm. It's half sunk. It's really not abandoned at that point because the fisherman has it, but it's still unseaworthy. Mm -hmm. yep. We have he has the ability as the enforcement tool to say, you know, you you got a tide cycle to get it out of here. And if you don't, mm -hmm. we have we have the ability with Marine Ford to tow it over the boat ramp, tie it off, put a line on it, and basically drag it up on the on the ramp so it's not going to obstruct the navigation channel. Okay. So I think the set the wording there, Cody, would be in section six is good. Take your time. Well, no, I, I well, promoted maybe. it to panelists, but I don't know if he's <laughs> in there. Can we just use the wording from three and put that into six also? That seems no, because they're two different. We, well, I mean, kind of edit that. Use that as kind of the, the basic. You know, kind of the place abandoned with unseaworthy. This is more about abandoning custody and control. So what I would do is in six, I would just put um, Marvin, can you hear us? I can hear you. I'm on the road. I apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, thanks for calling on me and I will uh, uh, raise my hand or otherwise speak up. Otherwise, I'll be listening. Thank you. Important. That's all. So you can keep listening. Um, in section six, I think we just need to put a sentence in there. Okay. And Tony, what we want to do is in section six, we just want a sentence at the end of it that gives the harbor master the authority to remove an, un uh, uh, an unseaworthy vessel based on his determination. Just so we have an ability, because because there's, there's a difference between a bandit and unseaworthy. And I don't want to I don't want to leave Gene say, well, it's unseaworthy vessel, I can't do anything about it, which is have the ability to remove sure. it before it sinks in the channel. Okay. So remove it or move to a safe location. Somewhere. Yeah, well, well something like that. Yeah. I would let we'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll come with some word. Yeah, right.
Section 8, if you're already at Section 3. Clean vessels and board of maintenance vessels. And it has to be unattended, anchored, or more illegal vessels. Yeah. See, under the state statute of abandoned vessels, I have to be declared. And if once they're abandoned, the owner has no rights to them. The, this still has this, this the owner still has a right to the vessel. Okay. Should we take abandoned off of section eight then? No, because I think it's one and the same. Basically, what happens is if you illegally birth the boat, mm -hmm. this covers you. And then if you abandon the boat, you go to this one. Okay. That's that's why that's how that I say that's why. We should on section nine. Mm -hmm. We should add some wording in there just to where it says uh, channel fairway birthing space in such manner as to impede navigation or cause damage to the vessel there and wreck or sunken vessels in the harbor or subject to the published rules and regulations of the U.S. Coast Guard and any applicable state law rules or regulations. I would put in the last sentence where we put U.S. Coast Guard and any applicable state laws, we should put in wording that says. Um, In inside the federal navigation project governed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So, be, which is different than the whole harbor? Then? It, 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 it it basically encompasses the entire navigable channel. So that way, what happens is. From the entrance of the harbor at the yacht club, mm -hmm. where the first one and three are, the first two buoys. Yeah. Are, uh, from there all the way up to the Ferry Beach area into the Federal Navigation Project, it extends all the way up from the marsh to the end of the morning field. Basically, said basically would include that if anybody sunk a vessel or dealt with it, we encompass the entire Federal Navigation Project. Not just the runway, the birthing space, and such. So that's more than the just. It's, same it's the entire place. area. So the when entire dredge area, area. Exactly. It's the right. entire mooring field and dredge channel. So you want to use that for phrasing instead of what's already. No, we would, we're going to use that. director of Sunday Vessels to harbor or subject to the published rules and regulations of the U.S. Coast Guard, comma. Federal navigation park project deemed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, comma, and any applicable state law, comma, federal law, rules or regulations. Because the federal navigation project comes under federal law. That's how I would word that. Well, thank you. I'm not an attorney, right? <laughs> right, attorneys will be involved. Right. That. I just think that we need to include the federal navigation okay. project so we have to cover ourselves. And I'm okay with B. I've read two B. I'm good with that. <laughs> Section 10 was a very, very bone of contention last week, Gene. Really? Yes. Houseboats. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, we went round and round with houseboats. There are people. Basically, what's happening is people are taking a boat. Mm -hmm. Let me let me rephrase. People are taking a structure. They're putting the structure on a lake. They're anchoring it on a lake, and as long as they're greater than hundred feet from shore, they basically can live there in front of the person's property, mm -hmm. not paying taxes. But there's no definition that they're a watercraft. There's no definition that they're a float. There's no definition that they're a houseboat. So uh, I'm sitting on the committee right now through the legislature to define the houseboat issue. But I think right now, uh, until IFNW and submerged lands and EEP and um, the Maine Harbor Masters Association 
come up with this definition, I think we should just leave this be because I don't really want to tender this until we have yeah. a definition of it, probably in another six months. But know that. Uh, so they haven't defined what a houseboat is then at the state level. Right, yeah, right now, if you have a vessel that can move yeah. and it's motorized and it's registered, yeah, it's a vessel. Sure. But if it can't, yeah, then what is it? Yeah. Right. Interesting. And I think that the only thing I would add right now, which we can circle back and visit, would would be um make it just have to provide the following permit flow down for silver top would be directly board from there. Yeah, I, I think we just leave this for right now until we really hash this out because I think that uh, I just get concerned someone's gonna drop a mm -hmm. drop a structure in the middle of the of the of the harbor. Sure. And they push it up the Nunsuch River and they anchor up and say, I'm living here. And we have nothing to go on. Mm -hmm. But this says, house was prepared for more than anchoring in the anchorage, except that marinas would provide the following. The only thing I would really change is say, houseboats are prohibited from mooring, anchoring in the anchorage and any coastal waters of the town of Scarborough. But is that true for any vessel otherwise? I mean, if you don't have a mooring, you're able to you're able to anchor overnight, right? Are you or not? Yeah, you can. Yeah. But this is houseboat specific. People are leaving. Houseboat on. typically, yeah. like if you had a houseboat, you don't uh depending on the way it is, you don't have to have a register. Yeah. yeah it so now you're engine, I guess. Yeah. Right. You're not paying a registration fee, you're not paying excise tax, you're not paying property tax. So and let me give you the theory. The theory is I go home on my driveway on a blue boat road. I go, I buy a pontoon boat and I strip it off. And I build a house on it and I take the house and I bring it down to the co-op and I launch it and I take it over to Clay Pits and I anchor it and say I'm gonna live here now. <laughs> and we have nothing to say they can't do we have that. Nothing that says I can't do that. Yeah, you know, I I'm guessing. I don't know for sure, but I'm sure people are gonna get creative for the housing shortage. And it seems to be happening on lakes. I know there's something that we, we, yeah, we deal, we're dealing with four or five, and I, I think that we really need to make sure that, like this says, any provisions of the contrary houseboats are prohibited from mooring or anchoring in the anchors except at marinas, which provide the following, which is fine. And if we if we don't, if we add one sentence to it, that basically in in the in the interim until we know what, who knows, this could go through legislation for the next six months or a year. Yeah. If we put any provisions that our country houseboats are prohibited from anchoring or mooring in the anchorage, except that a marina would provide the following. And then in somewhere in that sense, we, we could put um, well, it seems like they're prohibited anywhere except one through six, which we don't really have that anyway. So they're prohibited everywhere. Way it cuts out. So it's the issue that we, I mean, do we have a definition of a houseboat? Is that the no, that's, that's the legislative committee I'm sitting on right now. Yeah, I think that's part of the talk. Mooring um, or anchoring in the anchorage. See, right now it says houseboats are prohibited from mooring or anchoring in the anchorage, except at a marina, which provide the following. So technically, if you're outside the mooring field, you can drop a houseboat anywhere you want in the Dallas Carver. So should we so say the harbor or something like that? There is a that? definition of houseboat in the ordinance. It's number 13. Yeah, they probably added that one. Okay. This. Yes, they did. It's, it's on page three. It says a raft, tall barge, or vessel designed primarily to be used as living quarters and providing living, sleeping, cooking, and sanitary facilities, whether temporary or permanent. Yeah, because that was added in 2000. And that's, that's the other one I think we wrote state definition, which is in the process. Right. So let me just stay with that for a second, just to, you know, not to drag this out, but say you've got a sailboat. Okay, a sailboat could have most of those things on there, right? That a houseboat would have, according to the current definition. But someone could moor a sailboat, I mean, with, you know, they could anchor, right, and stay in the harbor indefinitely or take it in and out, or I mean, there's any rule about, about that. Uh, 
And I, I don't want to get off tangent. Off on a no, tangent, but I think but. that I think if I think if they if the state waters that they anchor more than thirty days, they have to register okay. the state pay excise okay. tax. That's state law. Um, but there's got to be something in here too about that too. I'm sure we have it. Because it seems to me that the house votes would be required, you know, would be obligated by by that at the minimum. But it sounds like you want other other restrictions what, for house what votes. I just, what I just don't want to have happen is that the last thing I think we want to have happen is someone drop a house vote. It's not really a house vote. It's not a vote. It's a house on the water. Yeah. And drop it in. Put it on. Put it up on the spit. And these guys are going to go berserk because they're going to try to clam dig. Yes, they will. Right, that's exactly <laughs> right. So I'm trying to protect them at the same time. Like, you know, I think that we we need to like, and we and we maybe have to come back to this yeah. after the state issue. We may make a note that said, once I, you know, we may have this may be something that comes circling back in like a 60, 90 days because I have a I have a Zoom call with the committee that I sit on. I think sometime in the middle of April. Mm -hmm. And once this gets flushed out, I'm the, I think it's LD 626 is the, is the rule. But once that gets flushed out, we really need to come back and visit this because, you know, who's going to stop somebody? Yeah. So I remember we had some issue recently, maybe the past year or two, where somebody was living on a boat. I forget how the person came up, but it was somebody in and around Crouch, but they were actually living on living on a boat. Do you remember that? And what it was, it was, I, I don't can't remember the context, course, yeah. but it was... A family actually that yeah. were claiming they were residents, but they didn't have a, an address. They had a you know, sale. Right. So, <laughs> and, and I think the way the way you get around it is you put under house bills. I mean, this is a good start. And then you put something to that. Yeah. If if you have a structure on the water that doesn't meet the criteria for a vessel or house bill. That is not state registered. That is not under power. Right. It cannot be there. Right. And then you're gonna then you're gonna have the, the somebody come in and say, well, what if I want to put an ice shack out fishing right. on such river? Right. Well, it's, that's a completely different scenario because that comes under a Title 12 law where you have to have a label with your name and yeah. license number to fish. I mean, it's a whole yeah. other issue. Because you need ice to put it on, right? So you need ice. To put it on. It's title, <laughs> right? So I just think that. I mean, I guess what we should do is we should put on the agenda. On the running agenda, yeah. like houseboat yeah. definition, so we don't forget. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Because I'm sure somebody in the town of Scarborough is going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to build one, and I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to let you. Know you too much. You I'm going to let you guys figure out how to get me out. Know too much. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to sell my house on Old Blue Point Road. I'll be living on this fit. No property tax. <laughs> that's right. Good <laughs> deal. Just move the house out of a bar. Right out there. <laughs> All right. All right. So, section six. The only thing I had under section one was do we want to assess a fee? Yeah, I wrote the same thing down. So, I think when we look at fees, we should uh, make sure. Yeah, I think we that. should. Yep. Um, we do have a any, any commercial, well, supposed to be any commercial. Vessel that comes in to use the pier, they have to have a fee. They have okay. to have a sticker. Right. And I think last year when we had one individual that did renew his sticker, and I know there's others out there that have not. Well, I think I think part of the problem what happens is is outside the scope of enforcement, some tuna boat comes in, calls the tuna buyer. Yep, I'm going to come in the pipe and call. I'll be there at ten o'clock. The boat pulls in at nine thirty, and they offload the tuna in the boat. Shoot back to its home port or whatever. Right. I think that um, that's where the cam cameras would come in handy. Yeah, that's where the yeah. I mean, we we chase it in soccer all the time for that. That's that's where you know a sign only does as well as a sign does. But we, right. we need to. So they allowed to use the crane that offloading, or is it high tide they're locked. They're locked. They're locked. The tuna truck has a crane in the back of the oh, truck. Oh, right. okay. They don't need any of that stuff. Gotcha. They don't need the crane at all. They just pull up, they drop the crane down. Okay. So, yeah. but they're still using the, the right. pier commercially, mm -hmm. really. It's just like anybody that goes and gets water off the pier for their room tanks and things. Okay. It's, it's the wear and tear on the pier. Right. The right. Check. It's right. not right. adds up. Right. Right. And I, and, I, and I know this, there's, there's a few lobster dealers in town that they have what they call a closed system lobster tank. 
15. So what they do is they back on the boat ramp, they back on the pier at high tide, they throw a suction in the water, and they suck water to a big tank. So they should be paying it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And they suck water, and the, 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 the response is going to be, why only can I get water two or three times a year? So you're still commercially selling lobsters and right. selling shellfish, so I don't care. You're still going to pay the, the three, gotcha. four dollar fee, mm -hmm. unless you want to go somewhere else. Go somewhere else to get the water. If you want to use the pier, you're going to pay the commercial use for it. Mm -hmm. And are you talking about driving down on the, the raised pier, or just in, whether it's the pier or the uh, like the dock? Is if you? Were I'm talking about driving down on the raised pier yeah. on the pier okay. itself. On the pier itself. Yeah. And dropping a, a tube okay. in and suck the water. Get back now, down if you, ramp, if you want to go get yeah. water out of the boat ramp and take a few, uh, you know, whatever, th that's one thing. But we know that there's people taking 3,000 gallons of water out to put in their closed system. You need a peer use permit. Does okay. Vita C pay? Huh? The seaweed company, does he pay? I don't know. He takes three, four bats every time he goes down there, which is often. Yeah, he's done. I think when we get to fees, yeah. we need to make sure we cover anything that might conceivably have wear and tear on the facilities. <clears throat> we should be charging for that. Yeah, we all know yeah. if we have to put money into fixing the pier, none of those people are going to be paying any money. So we no, and then I think that at the and, same at the same time, yeah, like if, if you're going to use that commercially, yeah, all these all the all the commercial fishermen pay a fee. Exactly, that's right. Yeah. So. Everybody should pay. Why if they're using it? Right. If you're going to use it commercially now, if you're going to pull in and you're going to tie it to the dock for thirty minutes, yeah, it's one you know twice a year because you bring your fit, whatever. Yeah, but if it's every day, if it's every day. Then I and I think that we can also, it, it, but I don't. I, we got to be careful because I don't want to burden Gene. You know, like in Saco, if you if you tie it to the, it's a fifteen minute courtesy to tie it to the dock. Mm -hmm. You tie it to the dock more than fifteen minutes, it's a five dollar fee. If you want to tie up for more than you know two three hours, it's like ten dollars. You know, and so if you want to get a recreational peer use fee where you can come in and you can tie up to that dock at any given time for 15, 30 minutes, no more than an hour, the limit space, then you might have to pay one hundred twenty dollars a year. Mm -hmm. But that's something to talk about with the fee structure. Yeah, which is amazing. No, I mean, all heads up. Sanitation facilities. That's that's Gene's department. He deals with the bathroom. But... <laughs> <laughs> you said that you're putting lights in there and stuff, but there's nothing that needs to be changed. I don't think in here. So I'm not like smoking. Let's put electrical in the bathroom. Uh, yeah, I, this is a maybe off topic a bit, but. Um, is this also a time for us to make sure we have a placeholder to uh, be sure that we're requiring some form of training and or you know, and payment, not only for the use of the areas that you've talked about, but also the, in particular the crane? Because I know it's just pretty commonplace in other areas, and we really don't have that as a practice here, and it's not in the ordinance anymore. As far as like training, we use that crane. Before it will get certified, before you do it, before you use it. Uh, Saco has that. I don't know. I mean, the biggest issue you have with your crane breaking down there is it's overloaded. Well, yeah. Well, which wouldn't that be covered by train. some sort of training yeah. by people that know how much weight to put on? Or at least to be, because right now it's there's no control on it at all. I mean, I could well, I think you have to be a commercial fisherman in the past. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, do you need you a commercial? commercial. Like, I don't, I can't get one of the I can't use. I don't actually. I don't. I don't know who's who controls the keys and crane. You. Yes. It is crane use tied to commercial peer users only. Is that? It yeah. I, I don't want to jump ahead if you're going to cover it. Yeah. No. Seems to me that yep. this is sort of a. Well, I think it's a good conversation because I think that if there's a fee, but yeah, I think that maybe we should have something about. It. Is there something in here? Here. Oh yeah, under five, peer, peer permit required for the peer. Under section, at, under section, uh, I'm on page 13. 13. Then again, I don't want to get crazy. No, it's too bureaucratic here, but it does seem that there's 
some other practices that are induced that uh, might be worth us discussing. Yeah, yeah it, that's worth it. We'll talk about yeah. Okay, see what we're Sorry, at. Or, uh, so discharge is there. One and two on good with. I don't have any issues there. Welding and burning, I think that it gives Gene the ability to hard master with the time to stipulate such blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think we, they don't do a lot of welding. They're not going to burn the docks up. I'm not really too, too concerned about that. So off, sell, offer for sale, deliver and bulk. Well, they already violate that every day, but that's okay. Go to two and three. I had one on 11. So responsibility for sanitation of facilities. So the owner, let's see, agent, manager, or person in charge of the facility uh, shall maintain the premises in a clean and sanitary condition. So who's responsible today for, for removing trash from Is it clean service still? It's gone back and forth, that's why. Yeah. Yes, at this point, the function is clean services. It's who? Clean services. services. Okay. They, they're supposed to be. So, the way this works is, is every morning at six in the morning, they come to Pine Point and they get. And they don't pick up the trash there. Okay. So, they do. Well, well they're supposed to. They, they, the way it used to work, Don, is they would come to Pine Point and get the UTV, yeah. the fire UTV. Yeah. And they would run from Avenue Five. Oh. No, it was down down by down by C Rose Lane. Or it was. Yeah. They would pick up the trash all the way through, and then they would put it in a dumpster at the co-op. No, they don't put it in the dumpster. No. They put it in the in a dump truck at the co-op. Excuse me. And then they would dump the trash from the bathrooms in there, and they would empty all the trash cans. Basically, from like where they started. Uh, like Oak Street, I think it was Oak Street, all the way up yep. through Snowberry Park, right. through Heard Park, put it in the truck, and then Jay would run it everything to Public Works or wherever he would dump it. That's how they used to do it. And then we, at one point, the police department was responsible for cleaning the bathrooms. With, it, it went back and forth three times. So I know, and this, we're talking about in season, this is what happens, but off season, I mean, the reason I bring this up is because there are problems with. There are barrels down there that don't get emptied, and we still have not solved the problem. Nope. Okay, so I'm, I'm, the easiest way to solve the problem down there yeah. in the off season is no barrels. Right. Because if you don't it, have the man to take care of it, you don't. Yeah. It's the wind. So but the wind, the wind miles 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 people miles. still use the beach. A lot of people get on there yeah, every day off season. Yeah. And so I get the no, I get the carry in, carry out thing. I get that. And I get the other trash removal activities, but I hear. Constant complaints about this, and we're, we've not made no, we've not made any progress, and we think we're clear in terms of who's assigned the accountability for it. But it's a similar problem here. If I heard, you know, next to parking, the next thing I heard about complaints were, yeah, that's right. Not the dumpster was not being emptied at down at the landing. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the other thing. So I, again, I'm not trying to put this in anybody's lap, but we've assigned it, and somehow there's a gap. And I, I, I support the no barrel thing. People are right. being irresponsible. You can't, you know, you can't legislate bad behavior, but it, it's just not, and particularly bad as it relates to dog do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know we had some suggestions there, like we had pails in the summer. We had, we tried to appeal to uh, people's sense of uh, taking responsibility for your dog. At, in, but uh, it, you know, so that's that's something that I'd suggest that we want, whatever we do, we want to make sure it's you know we get a solution that's going to work. Well, I, I still don't understand why community services. Yeah, like community services who own trash on all the beaches. If yeah. they own trash on all the beaches, they should be owning the trash on all the beaches. Probably. 
but I don't, why, why is it community service? I don't want to get off on a tangent, but why is it community services duty or responsibility and not, yeah, and not our, uh, well, I guess, you know, because they kind of the works. They I run the beaches, I guess, right? Yeah, right. they're part of the beach falls under the parks beach. and rec. Yeah. So they manage like that. the parking lot and all that stuff. Yeah, DPW yeah. doesn't empty trash yeah. on the beaches. It, it's always been community services. They do the parks, they do the baseball fields, yeah, well, the and they've done, they done the public access beaches. And, that's and the last I, yeah, anyway, the last I heard is we're going to get some sort of you know GIS map that tells us where you know where the trash is and how often we went to it and stuff like that. So we know we don't really, you know, we don't need a map. Well, I, I assume there was a lot of community services yeah, exactly. problem is lack of labor. Yeah, this is, I think also this is the maybe the first year they've contracted it out. Normally uh -huh. in the past it's always been community services staff. Right. Yeah. And I think this is the first year that you have a have dumpster contracted. down in two places down there. Yeah. If they contract it out, sure. I've never seen them down there. Yeah, that should be easier than if it's contracted, you should just hold them oh, on the contract. Maybe. Yeah, they could have it. But yeah. I'd be happy to try to follow up. I just want to raise my hand on that yeah. because it's something that's you know it's not going to get fixed. I, I, I think that that yeah, I think the trash cans at Snowberry Park and Herd Park are one thing, and the co-op. But other than that, everything else should be pulled in the off season. Everything from Oak Street all the way across. So they put barrels at every single street. What happens is these triangles doesn't know where they are. So say go to the park, pick it up. Go to Herd Park, pick it up. Go to Snowberry, go to Herd, and go to go to the co-op. And that's it. So yeah. barrels or no barrels, the trash will still be there because people go there How? and use it. And whoever's responsible for that needs to clean it up somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the basic thing. Now, some owners are sort of semi-responsible. They're responsible enough to drop it in residents' garbage cans as they're coming up, you know, from the beach. So that's I guess better than leaving it on the path on the beach or on the beach for someone else to pick up. But you know, it, it, the, taking the, the barrels off the beach has definitely worked in the winter, you know, not, I mean, in the summer, in that peak season. But again, if it's not happening, it's got to end some, you know, yeah. somebody's got to be pulled in the so, back, so to speak. So if coastal harbors, if we think there's a problem and it's not really under our jurisdiction, we want somebody to do something, what do we do then? Is that done where you would be as our last yeah, I mean, yeah. bring this up? You do what residents do, they call me and complain, <laughs> and I can talk to the town staff and my yeah. fellow we don't, Yeah, we don't want to get into the trash business either, no. especially if they've got the responsibility, but as long as somebody knows that we're not happy and we're hearing yeah. about it from people too, yeah. so, you know. Anyway, so I'll, I'll take that okay. um, to talk to Todd about it. So. Maybe we need a commissioner of trash or something. <laughs> uh, uh, a trash committee. Or a bureaucracy. Yeah, trash is on. Yeah, that one's a pain in good money. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was a paid position. No problem. How I do the trash every morning. We just say many take care of it down the line. Somebody out of country. We need somebody to pick it up. I know. It should be happening. Anyway, okay. Onward. So under P, we're on peer. Uh, page 13, right? Yes. B and C are they they definitely need to be addressed like that. Are you talking about section three? I'm sorry, section three B and C. No person shall store traps, bait, fishing gear, boats, waste materials on a float at Pine Point. Traps, gear, etc., may be loaded on load only. No person shall store any trap, bait, fishing gear, waste materials on floats for more than 24 hours for loading and unloading purposes throughout the year. So, is that an enforcement issue or something that's, we need to change? That's the it's Gene's challenge. <laughs> but he knows, he knows it. And I just think that we need to make sure that we push that because. Um, it gets it gets a bit much mm -hmm. but the about. ordinance seems pretty clear though it seems do. it's absolutely clear yeah, it's enforceable okay so it's two a and b two a and b are good okay should we maybe that's a place to add the training thing yeah i think right. that well it says that the harbor master in consultation with the committee can establish guidelines, policies, and procedures. So that would be something that this, I believe, if I'm reading it right, the committee would work with uh, Gene on setting up a policy. 
or some we, kind we of really don't have to add yeah it doesn't seem right. to be right. add anything not what it says some of the operating, operating guidelines yeah in the operating guidelines it just says that if we're to give you a key to the lift you need to be trained appropriately mm -hmm. your key here's how to operate it no more than xyz pounds on the lift yeah do i have one no no we have it Training. Guidelines. Yeah. Guidelines. yeah, Gene has it. It's not really so far. I have no idea if they have one or not. What the name weight and everything? It just says shall establish operating guidelines, policies, and procedures. I don't even know if we have operating guidelines, do we? So is there a fine associated with the crap around if you take it? I mean, like if you if you're driving down Route One and you're too fast and you get pulled over one time, maybe you get a warning, maybe you don't. But if you do it multiple times, there's a problem, right? So isn't that how the peer should be operated? Yeah, I think that under the operating guideline, I think that we should give the ability to have. We should draft something very simple that says if you're going to use the the, the peer or the, the hoist, just you have to use it within this scope. And if you don't, you're going to lose your peer use permit for 30 days. Right. And if you lose it again, you're going to lose it for 60 days. And if you lose it again, it's indefinite. You can make a new session so, to violate uh, what they call it. <clears throat> so should we set something in a future meeting to review these operating guidelines, policies, procedures? Sorry. There may not even be it. And establish something we need to. And we don't want to. We, we should probably. Well, page we, we should probably give. We should probably give something. Gene the, the ability to go back and do a little research. Yeah. And see if there is. Okay. Again, I picked the phone up and call our friend, but it's not going to work today. Yeah. So maybe what we can do for um, future meeting that is, Gene, if you if you can research that and just report back to us on what those guidelines procedures are, we'll review those if necessary. Just, I, I I I just didn't think there was something down there that we you had. Throw that on new business. Angela Ratnell somewhere. Yeah. Uh, sort of say that um, the operating guidelines are just a The Department Master is going to research current three things uh, we'll, we'll operating we'll guidelines, policies, and procedures. Yeah, it's it's kind of what's in A. It's going to research all that stuff. With and this, then we'll review with that section, in future. Do you meeting. want to put a, a section four of violations in the actually the peer, in yeah, the peer section? Yeah, I mean, we, we could, we could, we could once I guess once we revisit the operating guidelines, yeah. then we could put the section four violations once we revisit the operating guidelines. Yeah, yeah. so put that on the the operating guidelines of the yeah, of we'll the hoist. That. that way we don't have an issue with that. <laughs> Dinghies and skips, that's an ongoing issue. It doesn't matter what you're writing, that's always going to happen. And in fact, we actually, this year, was it this year we opened it up? This year, we actually opened up the public safety dock. We left it open to let them put some skips on the inside of that dock because there was a lot of moving parts out there. Mm -hmm. And I told them basically you can use it, mm -hmm. but, if, but if we have to, but if we have to go to, uh, Using that for public safety use, then we're going to kick you off. Sure. We okay. have someone that wants to right. make a comment. Um, we have someone that wants to make a comment. Is that sure. Okay? I just take her off and have her look. Uh, this is a public comment person? Or yeah. Like? I think she wants to comment on, on this. Okay. Yeah, we're doing it. I just I asked her to unmute herself. Oh, hey, Tody. Sorry, I hit the button accidentally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you want to say you didn't want to say anything? No, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Vinny, she's stalking you. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Vinny's here, Sue. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just think we had such a full with violations if we need to. Once we revisit the operating guidelines and see where we're at. Yeah. Add violations to section four in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to add a, we're yeah, add we a section, section four under article nine for violations. violations. Yeah, we'll add a section. So I don't have any public people here that do it. So, Mike, I'd just like to bring up one thing. To the risk of 
the committee. Yeah, getting bogged down because we have a we have a large load with dredging, mm -hmm. the pier, moorings, yep, and the fee schedule. And I think a group we need to prioritize what those things are. Mm -hmm. We spend a lot of time, and then you read the minutes, and then they go. Here is the terms of Scott Marsh when you buy your uh, membership. Mm -hmm. Labeled with all of the access points. Oh, it's probably better time. than what I came up with last time. But you know, it's, you know from here, these were all kind of mysterious. Yeah, they didn't seem to have That's good. Yeah, because we, so why don't we stop with the ordinance for now? We only got like eight minutes left. We'll pick that up because we still have more to do anyway. Yeah, okay. We had, um, we started discussion on the public access to waterways last time. Uh, which I think we definitely need to continue. I think we have time to talk about it now. So why don't we move that to, I'll make yeah. sure I can get more. Yeah, if we move that to old business for next time. Uh, because yeah, I think where we're, where we're going with this is we want to end up with kind of a definitive list of all these access points figure out some way to get that publicized, which I think there's a place to do it on the, on the website, which I looked at the new version. It's probably be better than what it was. Well, you you partner with them, don't you? I can get, a, they left me, um, I forgot how about those. They have left me a case that I don't have anymore. I'll call them and see if they can. Yeah, then we have to circle back on it. And I'll circle back on it. Certainly the information is there. Yeah, it's how you want everybody down there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Well, yeah, I would go three places. Donate. Yeah, stick of the goods down. Yep. This section, and so we can leave this in this whole section of the city. Yeah. There's a draw. Okay. Well, no, as as a continuation. Yeah, because we're going to we're going to continue 1401 review. Yeah. 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 That way we have some time to read this and call through it. Yeah. That's a good point. Red line. Yeah, exactly. And then we still we still have to do that. Yeah, we still have to do that. Yeah, exactly. All right. So uh so for next time you know, we're going to have a update on peer maintenance. Yep. Uh, we're going to continue with discussions on 1401, which we've been doing. Yeah, actually the same thing that's there, plus the schedule of fees. We haven't gotten to that yet. And public access to waterways, we want to talk about that. So that'll be considered old business, but still want to talk about. It. <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to just bring up uh, here, I guess it's on our new business, whatever the heck it is. I saw the email on the Saltwind Sea Farm application. Mm -hmm. It's coming up. That's uh, They're having a scope in session on that Friday afternoon. Yeah, so I guess the question is, depending on how that happens, is that is something going to fall under our jurisdiction? I think it's a renewal. It is. It's a DMR. So when they first got the lease, it was good for to prove themselves for so many years, right? yeah, like that, yeah, three so it's years, just renewal, like that, yeah, yeah. and then now it's up again. Okay, They're just going to redo the lease. Oh. It's the it's same, standard same, same, okay, same, so it's so not anything, same, same, everything. It's a, it's a DMR of property okay. resources. Uh, yeah. Like there's what two other ones, none such, and then Pine Point Oyster, none or such, Pine Point. All right. Yeah, so there's three of them. Glidden, whatever. Yeah, Glidden. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so renewals we don't it doesn't. Impact us. Okay. Well, they're not. It's not. They're not increasing any bed yeah. size. They're not changing okay. anything. It's all. Uh, they have to prove their business model to the state. Which is is the next meeting in April with shellfish again? Um, with shellfish or is it app shellfish? We were, we were talking about doing a joint meeting, but they didn't show a ton of enthusiasm and. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what we get out of the joint meetings. I know they get stuff out of the. Joint I think meetings. like. The Don said, if it's something like we were talking about with the parking, parking. and stuff, or if it's yeah. an issue that they're both that you, both committees would be addressing, then I would think. But like, the last couple of meetings they've had have really focused primarily on things related to surveys and things directly mm -hmm. related to their their to stuff. Their yeah, commission okay. their role. Yeah. They're gonna meet on the twenty second. Right. That's what it they they canceled for tonight. Right. And moved it to the twenty second. Yeah, well, I, I won't be here on the twenty second of March. Yes. Of March. I won't be here this year. Oh, no. yeah. They were hoping to. They, they, I think they're going to focus on the conservation to get that yeah. done. Right. So the surveys and stuff, yeah. and then also there was an issue of yeah. the possibility of uh, 
Not a four thousand four. Yeah. Yes, okay. going from commercial yeah. to yes. that the, the, the residents are awarding for free for. Uh, no, we don't need. No, no we don't need. That was in the red line version that I uh, gave. I emailed out. That should be. Yeah. 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 Structure. More so the only thing I'd say about the, your schedule, the fees is coming right up, but I, it's related somewhat to the. Uh, I think the more renewals have already been sent. They have. So these fees wouldn't take effect until next, next year, next okay. cycle. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and I'm, you know, I just focus on the fees issue, but I know we haven't set fees yet for yeah. the use of the new business, something about reviewing. Is of the parking the guys for the season yeah. for Heard Park and also for Higgins. Right. Remember that was postponed yeah. by the council, so that's mm -hmm. coming right up. It may not be directly related to what you're working on, but your, you know, your input on that would be helpful you know, for us to you know, get a bearing on that. Thing. So I'd actually so you see away from parking. I mean, we started down that road and. Uh, I think we got we got bogged down with this. Yeah, we I think once we flush out the fees and the more, yeah. I, mean, I, think, I think that once we flush out the more the, the ordinance and the fees, mm -hmm. the fees can take effect next year. Then we should right. okay, we're going to be right in the middle of the season, but we'll flush out parking through the summer because we'll have it'll be hot to try and let that run, and then and then we'll. But the council has to has to has approve to rates, fees. and that yeah. has come before the council was postponed. In order to work on it, it's you know it's coming right up. I can say April fifteenth is yeah. the effective date, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't approve anything by that in the current rate. We start. We start issuing uh, beach passes May first. Yeah. yeah. And this big sort of resident and non resident still charge, right? Yeah. Well, the fees. Our fees are staying <laughs> right. the same until next year. Right? Our fees are not changing. Right. Yeah. Beach so we'll set them for twenty twenty three. Well, let's let's just put it this way. Uh, whenever the schedule of fees are approved, yeah. they take effect like 1201 that midnight. So the licenses, the, the, these fees that are in place will be fine because the new fees won't take effect probably until what, May or June. So these guys have already been, the, the invoices have already been yeah. set up for the cycle. So whoever gets a new more, oh, if they one. get okay. it, will be at the new rate if, it, if it's- Well, I thought everything kicked to next year then. No. No, I, I, the ones I was talking about were like separate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. His is separate. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the parking fees is community services, right? Why not? Uh, they're involved. Yeah. yeah. They would make recommendations. Yeah. They, they take the town council. Correct. Right. Final yeah. sale, right? The council makes the final sale. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were not approved. The recommendations were not approved because there was a lot of pushback on raising fees for early morning users mm -hmm. and also. You know what the non-resident additional. Uh, I just think what should sure. we get market pass? Yeah, so it's uh, what is it? fifty bucks yeah. year round. It's well, a I short topic, you. but a long conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, I, I will well, bring, I, the one thing I, I, I two I'm things going. I want to bring up um, mm -hmm. real quick. The the mooring info project that I've been working on for two years, Gene's included in it, but he's he's riding on my coattails right now that's in the process of dealing with uh it he's still the finance director i have had probably 20 emails with the finance director tony's been included on him i just put you one on him i put you on him so that hopefully by next year will be in for the yeah. online registration. so they'll be able to go yeah. online and register yeah. the it's taken a year i understand it takes time which is fine but the other thing that i had a very lengthy discussion with the army corps last week i introduce gene into a bunch of those people in that circle that one deals with navigation projects one deals with expansion of navigation projects one deals with dredging uh april or may they are going to dredge the channel the emergency dredge mm -hmm. but there is plans for next march for them to dredge the entire federal navigation project in our harbor which is going to be a huge lift because we're going to have to move all the moorings we're going to have to have the whole federal navigation project dredged. But um, there is the ability for us, and I got a solid number finally. Um, I talked to Craig Nelson, who's the project manager for um, this project in Skyro. And the Army Corps will pay the, the mobilization and the demobilization fees and all the fees associated 
if the town of Scarborough wants to dredge anything beyond what the FNP is, which is the Federal Navigation Project, the cost per yard will be between $15 and $22 per yard. So Gene and I figured out last Thursday or Friday, we did a big calculation. Sean Mahaney, who works for the Army Corps Engineers here at Maine, did a big calculation. It was roughly a nine acre area. It was um, 470 some cubic yards at $20, right? So th those are just very preliminary numbers. So basically what it boils down to is if we want to expand that federal navigation project, we can to a guy by the name of Mark Havel, who's the, the regional director. Um, but I know that Tom had some money, was going to try to set aside some money in CIP money to say, can we expand and not expand the anchorage, but do some dredging. So Gene and I are going to try to have a conference call with Craig probably sometime this week or next week. And then once we have that, we'll know the areas we want to kind of dig a little extra at. And, and I, get, I think the goal would be is if we can open that morning field up a little bit where he can take some pressure off the waiting list and where there's 30, 40 people on the waiting list, even if we can add eight or 10 moorings, Gene and I already talked about it last week that the people that don't renew and the people that haven't renewed, you're, you're getting canned. Sure. And because there's people in that mooring list that have been on there for probably 20 years that will mm -hmm. never see a mooring. Um, so I think if we can do it that, he can do it from the, from the mooring list side to open up some moorings. And we can dredge a few areas and add a few moorings. At the end of the day, we might be able to add 15 or 20 moorings, maybe even 25, depending. Now, the, the caveat to those we'll have to put is, we're gonna dredge this, we're gonna give you a mooring here with a low tide depth of 10 feet, but we're gonna to want to sample that and hydrographic survey it every single year because if it silts back in in three years yeah, and we don't have the numbers to do it, we may not do those mooring fields again when they say, so it's it's gonna it's gonna take some time. So the emergency dredging, they don't do the whole they don't do the emergency dredging dredging is just channel coming oh, in because do because of yeah, the there's no there's no navigation. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that that's a done deal. deal. That that is okay. done. That's happening like next month. Okay. The notice went out. Uh I, I emailed it to everybody here. Yeah. And if you look at that email and you go to the link and you click the link, there's like 20 pages. Of all the warnings there, but it'll show you the emergency channel. Whether okay. that's the emergency channel, and yeah. then the outlined area that goes through the mooring field that's what they call an FMP, which is the Federal Navigation Project. That's what's going to get done. Some of that will get done in April, yeah, but the whole area won't get done until next okay. year. So, do we need to put this on a future new business then? To talk no. about this? No. It's all, it's all, it's all Tom, it, everything is being dealt with by um, the town manager and Army Corps. And Gene, yeah. all this us. information is out on the web too. Yeah, yeah. On the okay. Web. It's like stay connected. You'll see projects, and there's all there's some, another packet of information from from the dredging project too. Okay. I'll send it out. I'll send the link. Well, you're just calling it. Right? I want to thank them for all the work you've done. Yeah, he's he's killing it. Yes, it's unbelievable. The most valuable yeah. committee member. I just want to have a special award. <laughs> recognition. It's just knowing something. That's all. It is. <laughs> it's not how to navigate the system. Yeah, well, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't want the poor guy to drown. <laughs> I don't want him to quit. I want him to stay working. That's why. Exactly. All right. So I think we've got our agenda set for next time. Uh, nope. We don't have any public, so no public comment. Um, Can you hear me? Here? This is Marvin. Marvin. Yeah. Yes. I I took myself off mute. I I couldn't help. Uh, wanting to comment about uh, the uh, expense of having more dredging done cubic yard wise, that seems like an incredible bargain. And uh, I'm, this is only for my two cents is all I'm adding. And uh, if it can be done uh, and add a few more moorings, that seems like a great idea. I realize this is a work in progress. And uh, you've touched upon fees as well. And I'm just going to give you my uh, free opinion, free advice and worth every penny. And that is, it seems to me that the mooring fees 
are incredibly low. And I'm sure we'd like to keep them that way. But as we view the fees, I would suggest that we at least consider uh, bringing those mooring fees into some kind of range, market range, uh, that seems higher to me than what it is right now and may be able to offset or at least contribute to ongoing dredging for the new moorings. That, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. It's great joining you. All right. Be safe. I, I did have one comment here. Yeah. Just one update, uh, one additional update from a liaison standpoint related to dredging. So I've gotten phone calls from people on Pillsbury Shores expressing concern about the erosion down there. We know other, it's a, you know, yeah. there are a lot of folks that are that are experiencing that. And, and uh, now the, the folks that have been the loudest about it happen to be property owners, not residents, but uh, we still, you know, uh, they still pay taxes. So, um, but they wanted to get some guidance uh, from Tom, Paul, and the town in terms of where the spoils from the dredges, the dredging will go, where they will be used. And I think in the past there was concern that a lot of that went back to Camp Ellis. Uh, at least somebody said that. I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, I just want you to know that's something that uh, people have asked questions about, and Tom is focused on it. So um, I think it's Tom is focused on Western yeah. Beach and yeah. the island. Yeah. Western so, Beach and the island. It does, it does seem like you ought to try what Western Beach. Yeah, over by Prout's Neck, and then yeah, down the road. Is that the great thing? Right, we go to the island. On yeah. Right. That's the first one. They don't want to lose that water. Right. It's very important for the birds. So I, I, I believe it's going to go on the west of the beach. You talking about when they dredge it? Yeah. Yeah. Everything they dredge is going to a place called uh, what? Something okay. like. Uh, while you're looking at <laughs> while you're looking at John, on, little, it's going to Little John, I think. What so the places that people have complained about at Pillsbury are right around the jetty, right around the jetty on the channel side. There seems to be, you know, scoured out around there and their properties you know, right on the water. So yeah. I mean, believe me, there'll be a lot of people in yeah. Ashford. Excuse me. Can, can we have one person talking at once, please? So, anyway, done. So we're talking about, oh yeah. So the people that you're getting complaints from are the people along the jetty, those the first like 300 yards right there where it's it's, it's coming and build the cliff. Right. It's kind of yeah, the, it's coming at the foot of the jetty, I think, and scouring around there and scouring the properties that are immediately adjacent it's to the sand bar. So like, yeah. Right. So and I, you know, believe me, there are gonna be a lot of people asking, you know, for it to be put on their property. So uh Whatever we do, I want to make sure that we have some process for determining priority. It sounds like you've got, you know, they've got a plan to do that already. So um, I'm sure there will be some more cases. This is showing 130 cubic yards. It says 130 cubic yards of primary sand set of the entire Scott River, about 22 acres. Is what's going to be dredged, and they're showing it as moving the dredge Little River Rock near Short Site. That's where they're going to dump everything. Which is down there. Which is down there. Yeah. yeah. Which is just below Surfside, but it's it's between the pier. This is the Scarborough Orchard Line right here. Yeah. So it's, it's between the pier. And the Scarborough Orchard Line is where they're going to Oh. Oh. Doesn't wow. seem to make any sense. <laughs> it's just an open space. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And that's because it's all sand. Is why? Yeah. Right there. Oh. Little River near Short Placement site. So they're going to they're take everything from here. They're going to run it. And there's some spider chopper that is up in here. Well, this is the channel. Yeah. This is the FNP. It's yeah. Oh, no, I mean, where they're having the erosion. Yeah, well, on this side of the pier. So where's the erosion problem? The erosion problem right, right there. The erosion problem is basically if you if you go down to yeah. park, yep. you drive if you drive to her park and you walk down on the beach, you take a left and you walk all the way to the pier. Yeah, it's right at that. Yeah. I mean, it's like 
So why don't they just dump it there? It seems like you mean the uh, jet, <laughs> when you say the beer, I'm thinking over. over I'm sorry, the beer. I'm sorry, jetty. The jetty. They can't get in there. It, it, oh, they just can't. Not there's no way to no access. Okay. Because that sand bar was all the way out. Yeah. Okay. Now I I don't know that they're going to put this in there. Yeah. Nobody's made any promises other than to say, well, yeah, if they're taking it there, yeah, exactly. Let's sell it to Saco then. <laughs> but just 20 bucks a yard. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is the full this has this isn't the emergency dredge project. This is the full FNP dredge project. It's gonna go to the little river site. And I don't know why they're dumping. I, I think I know why they're dumping it there. It's because of the outfall, and there's limited fisheries right there. It's probably why. Yeah, there's probably more to it than there's a lot to appreciate. Yeah, yeah. So a long time ago, probably if anyone remembers this, but there used to be little river used to be used to go right into Saco Bay, and at certain times. I guess high rains or whatever, or in the summer, there was a we'd have to drive across water to get on East Rand Avenue over to over to Bridge, really? over to Beach. So yeah. there was actually a river there. Yeah, little, little, it's still on the road. Road. When you drive, when you walk through that low tide, you get a big, big rain. That water still runs down to that sand, and I run hard. I'm surprised they're going to put all 22 acres to stop there, though. It'll be a nice thing to walk out. <laughs> yeah, really? Exactly. <laughs> marketing for a bunch of All right, anything else? Motion. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We're adjourned.